I'm not worried about that anymore. You can have that. Why I'm going to get you in the spread and best bets. You've conceded. I've gotten the phone call from the failed candidate. All right. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to win the Stop other two. Stop the count. If the third happens. Stop the count. Yep. Yep. Stop the count. <laughs> Stop the count indeed. Here we are. We're counting up to week 14 already of the 2021 season. Chris Sims, Mike Florio. It's PFTPM and Chris Sims Unbuttoned presented by Under Armour. Joint Mega Picks podcast. We do it every Thursday of football season. And, hmm, I usually don't see the results until it's time for our next round of picks. And I am now encouraged. I'm buoyed by seeing that not only did I win yet again in the straight up category, 10 and four versus nine and five versus the spread. Your fallback position after you conceded the straight up your ass. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That's up the your ass. weird science reference. Yeah. Give me the whole bottle straight up. I, we did it a few weeks ago. Look up the clip. Weird science straight up. You'll see what we're talking about. Anyway, I'm extending my lead. I doubled my lead just when you were in striking distance to catch me against the spread. 10 and 4 versus 7 and 7. Hey, 10 and 4 against the spread. That's pretty strong. I'm going to Las Vegas. You won't. You won't. You're scared. You're scared. Place a bet. Put your money where your mouth is, Florio. Put it in there. I mean, I best mean, bets really, were still, it kills still, me. Best bets is all that's left. Your best bet? No, bull crap. I can still catch you versus the spread. Six okay. games is not Keep that trying. bad. This is the time of the season where you start taking risks. Keep going. Keep going. Keep digging that hole, baby. I know. Well, that's what does happen. And I, I, I try not. I literally sit here as I pick the games and go, ooh. And I go, this could be one there. The upset goes. And then I sit there and go, wait, wait. Just pick who you think is going to win the game. Don't try to pick it based on making up a game against that stupid kid Florio. Okay? Thank you. So, let's go. <laughs> it gets Rich in your head, though. It does. She's going to be busy bleeping. <laughs> um, so, I, but, but I'll give you an example. And, and this is why I'm very glad I don't bet. I, I would have bet the house on the Patriots-Bills game going under. And I would have felt great about it. And I would have felt so great about it that all of a sudden I would have felt like I know what I'm doing. So you start betting on other things. And the next thing you know, anything you won, taking the under on Monday night, is gone. It's, and then you're even farther behind than where you started. So yeah, once they get this the is hook all the in enjoyment you. Right. that I need. This is all the enjoyment that I need going against you and beating you in all categories. But the lead in the best bets is still a very narrow one game, 22 and 17 versus 21 and 18. Let's get to it. All odds, as always, provided by our friends at Points Bet. Thursday night football. Steelers at the Vikings. The Vikings are now three and a half point favorites. The line creeping in their direction, an over under of 43.5. Chris, I've gone back and forth. I went back and forth like well, three times earlier today when you were giving me your take on how this matchup goes. It's like, yeah, it sounds pretty good. I like the Vikings. Well, that sounds pretty good. I like the Steelers. Well, that sounds <laughs> yeah. pretty good. I like the Vikings. Yeah. I don't know what to do. What are you doing? Well, no, you, 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 this is the Florio Bowl. Okay. I mean, this is it's the Steelers who live right up the road from you, and you should be a fan of them. You have a great feel for the pulse of their team, and then your your favorite team in all the world, the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. You have to lead this off. So I want to hear where you're going to go with this one. You just want to see where I'm going so you can try. To I won't. I never do that. I promise you I won't. I'll put in mine as you talk so you know if, if, you, if you want to do that. What, what I do is I, I make all my picks the night before, and then I review them during that hour that we have between the completion of PFT Live and the start of the Joint Mega Picks podcast. Most of the time I don't change my mind. This time I did change my mind. I had the Steelers. I've switched it to Minnesota 27, Pittsburgh 23. I think the desperation level from the Vikings is going to be greater. I think Mike Zimmer knows his job is riding on getting to the playoffs and that he could be a candidate to have the ultimate indignity of being ushered out the door with time left in the season because this year, for the first time ever, teams can begin as of the launch of Week 17. you got a two-week head start if you want to take it on interviewing candidates from other teams with permission from those teams as long as you have a coaching vacancy, meaning that your coach has to either be gone or he has to have been told he's going to be gone at the end of the season. 
that's when the advantage arises, and that's where I think some of these guys are going to realize the the clock may strike 12 for me a couple of weeks early, so I better do what I can. And I don't know that I'm going to suggest we're going to see fake punts or other craziness, but I, I think you're going to see a level of desperation from the Vikings tonight that we don't usually see because they desperately need this win. That's what ultimately got me. The X's and O's are close enough. The desperation level for the Vikings, the home field advantage, I think that they beat Pittsburgh at home for the first time since 1986. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm disappointed that you're going that way. I guess you love them today um, instead of love them not. But No, I love being right. Yeah, I'm going with the Vikings too. I am. You know, I look at it this way. Hey, neither defense is very good. No, they're not. We know that. Vikings are 30th in football. I think the Steelers are 22nd or 3rd, right in that range. You know, but then you flip it over and you go, well, the Vikings offense is significantly better than the Steelers offense. And, you know, within that, a Steelers defense that, you know, you, this is not like they, they got to defend two things. I, I mean, I know Dalvin Cook is still iffy for tonight. It looks like he's tendi- trending towards playing, but it doesn't really change my thought that much. Madison's really good. Their run game with Madison, you still have to worry about it and, 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 and you know, put resources into stopping it. You've heard me say over the last few weeks – Pittsburgh thin up front on the defensive line, not a lot of depth there, but then you couple that with a pretty damn good pass game to go along with it. That can make big plays in the pass game. You know, they do in their own way, make you defend the whole field. So I just look at that as advantage, advantage Vikings as in like, okay, Hey, the Steelers offense versus the Vikings defense. I know the Vikings defense is worse, but the good thing is for the Vikings tonight, it looks like they're going to have a healthy, a healthy defense for the first time in a while, everybody together. So I look at that and go, okay, we know Pittsburgh wants to run. I don't, they're not a great running team though. I don't know necessarily think they're going to uh, healthy front seven of the Vikings. I don't necessarily look at that as like, oh, wow. Okay. They're going to be able to do that. And therefore it's going to go into the passing game. The Vikings pass defense, not good either, but you know, neither is the Steelers pass offense. It's just, it's good enough to make a play here and there. And that's where I just can't get behind the Steelers. Again, I'm not coming off just because they won last week. I'm not coming off that there's no way the Steelers make the playoffs. I just don't see it. I'm going Vikings 30-24. to 24. And uh, one last point here. Yeah. The Vikings defense, and specifically Coach Mike Zimmer, needs to be reminded this is not a CFL end zone that goes 25 yards deep. Focus on the goal line if and when the time comes for the Steelers to try to boom, attack. Boom, boom, boom. One more shot out the door. <laughs> well. <laughs> or or Mike Zimmer will be coaching in the CFL where they do have a 25 yard end zone since yeah. he is very adept right. at guarding the back of the end zone, not the front. So of it. today you right. put him in the CFL if things don't go go well. Earlier on the show today you said if Jared Goff didn't play well last week he'd be bad in the CFL. So you put two people. I don't people think Goff borderline. would make it in the CFL. I don't think Goff would they make throw it, in it too CFL. much. CFL's, yeah, yeah <laughs> CFL is better yeah. than people realize. <laughs> Uh, and too many cold weather games for someone with, uh, uh, you know, not the biggest hands in the world and also not thriving in those kinds of elements. One o'clock Eastern games on Sunday, the Falcons at the Panthers, the Panthers two and a half point favorites and 42 and a half over under. And the Panthers are are in this kind of sneaky dysfunctional stage. That they were able to keep under wraps by firing offensive coordinator Joe Brady when they did. We always say dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. Well, when you see a dysfunctional thing, you work backward and say, maybe we got a dysfunctional team. I'm concerned about the Panthers. I'll go ahead and take this one first, too. I think the Falcons beat them. I'm surprised by this spread. I think the Panthers are crumbling, and I think the Falcons have convinced themselves they're rising. They they played the, the Buccaneers tough. They've won enough games that they're in the fringes of the playoff chase. I like the Pan- the Panthers to lose this one. Falcons, what's my score here? 27-20. I just think that, that the Falcons are catching the Panthers at the perfect time because the move with Joe Brady tells me that behind the curtain, it's getting messy in Charlotte. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you all the way there. I think you make a lot of good points. That concerns me about Carolina. You don't know what to get from Carolina. Hey, I know their defense is good. I get it. It's real good. But it is a little bit predictable. You know, Matt Ryan and that offense, I know it's not great, but they're kind of gritty and tough and hang in there every game. You know, they stay somewhat patient to the run, even though it's not a great run game. And, of course, Matt Ryan's still really good. They got a good system. 
And with Cordero Patterson, like we've talked about with Pitts, you know, Gage, it's not the worst group in the world. And, you know, added to what you said with the question marks and the Panthers and the dysfunctionality a little bit and just never knowing what to expect with their offense, you know, the Falcons defense is not real good. No, but I mean, I, Carolina can't do anything to take advantage of it. At least they don't show me that possibility. So I'm with you. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the Falcons in an ugly kind of football game. I think they lost 19 to 13 the first time around. Uh, I'm gonna put them 20 to 13 victors this time around. I'm tempted to make this one a best bet too because the Panthers are two and a half point favorites, and I just look at that and I say you got the wrong team as a two and a half point favorite, and and this is one of the realities. I think the betting public it didn't quite sink in that the Panthers are currently sinking based upon seven out of nine losing. Yeah, halfway through. Halfway through their bye week, we find out their offensive coordinator is out the door. I just think there's a hell of a story to be told behind that curtain, and maybe we'll get it at some point. Maybe we'll get it after Matt Rule is fired at the end of the season if that happens. Ravens at the Browns. This is the Browns bye week sandwich where the meat is a Sunday off and the bread is Ravens and Ravens. And the Browns this time favored two and a half points over under a 42. First time Lamar Jackson is an underdog against the Cleveland Browns. Do the Browns make the most of their extra time to reverse the result that we saw on Sunday night football a week and a half ago, Chris? Uh, I, I'm going to say yes, I am. I'm going to go with the Browns. Again, I, I feel like Baltimore is reeling a little bit. There's no Marlon Humphrey. You know, they're another team, as you saw, as the fourth quarter last week against the Steelers. They kind of wore down. They're not real deep. They don't have a real deep defensive line. You know, I think Cleveland being really desperate in this football game, certainly more desperate than Baltimore, who's still sitting there at eight and four. Man, you're Cleveland at home. You go down six and seven, go to six and seven. Wow. You know, as I mentioned, you know, the last time, hey, you know, Cleveland messed up some opportunities in that football game to score some points. You know, did some dumb things on defense. I think they have the personnel to slow down Lamar and company. I do. And hopefully they have a wrinkle or two to add to that. The Ravens losing Marlon Humphrey's a big deal. It really is. He is the guy that allows them to, hey, you got him, and we're going to do all this kind of different stuff over here. That 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 is an issue, you know, certainly. And, you know, I just think, again, ultimately, I think the Browns have – a better potential and a better roster at this point than the Ravens. The Ravens are just tough and battle tested. I think this is one the Browns eke out. I think it's like 17 all late in the game. Browns score a touchdown to go ahead 24 17. They win the football game at home. I got 19 16. Same thought. You know, desperation counts for something this time of year. The Ravens' offense is just not generating the way that it used to. No. And you can only take so many hits from an injury standpoint, until it reaches critical mass. And yeah. this Marlon Humphrey thing, to the extent that Marlon Humphrey's absence actually was a factor in John Harbaugh's decision to go for two instead of play for overtime, that tells you what their concern level is. Now, if any coach can overcome it, it's Harbaugh, but I just think we're asking too much, especially when you consider that on the same day that the Ravens were in the hard-fought battle with Pittsburgh, the Browns were doing nothing other than refining – yeah, their what they got to do. Right. To right. their next game against the Ravens, the team that they most recently played. So I think the Browns win this one. I'm with you on that. Seattle Seahawks at the Houston Texans. Seven and a half point favorite. Seattle, four and an eight team. Four and eight team, excuse me. Seven and a half point favorite on the road. That's what happens when you play the Texans. 41 and a half over under, lowest of the week. Do the Seahawks get to five and eight, Chris? I think so. I mean, I think this is in the, the category of, you know, maybe winning the prize of the ugliest game of the week. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, again, you've heard me say a few times this year, the Texans' defense is not as bad as it statistically says. You know, they, they will be able to stop a crappy run game from Seattle. And then Lovey Smith, of course, he's the most stubborn SOB in the history of football trying to get him out of a two-safety defense. So he's going to be protected on the outside against Lockett and Metcalf, you know, versus the corners. There's not going to be a whole lot of times I would think they get one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But as we know, hey, you know, no Jamal Adams, but that Texans offense stinks. What are you going to really tell me they're going to do that day? You know, I, I don't know. The Seahawks defense, it, again, it's not the greatest, but last five or six, six weeks, for the most part, it's been respectable. I know there's no Jamal Adams, but I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. I think the Seahawks win an ugly 21-10 to football game. 
So you've got them winning. You've got them covering. I think there's going to be more points scored here. I could see the Seahawks scoring 30 for a second straight week. I think they're starting to find a little confidence, a little rhythm. If they can put up 30 against the 49ers, they can put up 30 against the Houston Texans. And there's another little interesting twist here. Adrian Peterson, who had a touchdown. Now, he only had 16 yards on 11 carries, but it'll be his second game with the team. He's from Houston. Yeah, that's right. He's going back to Houston. And uh, as you get closer and closer to the end of your career, things like that matter. Maybe the last time he ever plays, probably will be the last time he ever plays in Houston. And uh, he may have a little something extra for the Texans that day, especially because the Texans have never given him a serious look on all the times he's been available over the past several years. And I'm sure he would have liked to have played for one of the Texas teams at one point. So I like Seattle in this one, 30 to 16. And don't look now, but, you know, they, they're still alive. And they could still finish above 500 and continue a streak that goes back to 2012 yeah. of seasons, not just eight and eight, but above 500 every single year, Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas city chiefs. This was a Sunday night game a few weeks back. And I think you like the Raiders in that one. I like the chiefs, the chiefs won somewhat handily, although it was probably closer than the score would indicate chiefs, nine point favorites this time at home, 48 over under do the chiefs continue their unlikely resurrection from that early season debacle. I I, I do. I, I mean, again, I, I don't love the way the Chiefs offense is playing. We know that. But the advantage they have in this matchup and why we saw it, you know, a few weeks ago is, you know, one, they can protect the passer so they can stop and gawk away and Max Crosby from causing too much havoc. You know, the, the, they got that piece. And then after that, well, what else is there to worry about with the Raiders? You know, and – the, the Chiefs have seemed, in my opinion, to figure out, you know, the code cracking of the Raiders' defense. I mean, Gus Bradley and company, they just don't do enough on the defensive side of the ball. They're sound. They're never out of position. But when you got an offense that has some answers for that and a quarterback who now is comfortable against that scheme and, you know, understands how he has to play against them, I, I just think they'll surgically dissect the Raiders once again. And, you know, the Raiders' offense – yeah, I mean, again, it, I, we haven't seen a whole lot of good there other than the Thanksgiving game, you know, with Dallas not having answers to stop their pass game. Kansas City's defense playing real well right now. They can cover you man-to-man, -man, and then they sprinkle in a few creative disguise zones and things like that that I just don't see how the Raiders win the game. I'm going 31-20 Chiefs. I got 34-20 Chiefs, and uh... – I said this earlier on PFT Live, Andy Reid versus Rich Bisaccia. That's why I picked the Chiefs the last time around. And this is no disrespect intended to Rich Bisaccia. He would acknowledge it. He's not in the same category, not in the same class as Andy Reid. Andy Reid is one of the best coaches in football. Rich Bisaccia is the interim head coach of the Raiders because he was the guy that Mark Davis decided to hand the whistle to when John Gruden walked away after those emails came out. Bisaccia has never been a candidate to be a head coach, and he's just not anywhere close to Andy Reid's class. That makes a difference, and it's been harder for the Raiders to win as the season's gone on because of that. And also, the Chiefs are keenly aware of that victory lap that the buses took when the Raiders beat the Chiefs last year. They will be reminded of that this week. 34-20 to 20 is the final score. And, you know, another sign of progress for the offense as they – work their way toward what maybe they hope to be. Let me point this out, too. I, this the Josh Gordon situation is odd. He started that game on Sunday night, and he was on the field for 13 snaps and had zero targets. They need him to develop. They need to get him involved. Patrick Mahomes has raved about him in the past. This could be the key. You know, he could be their Sammy Watkins down the stretch and into the playoffs. And maybe they're deliberately holding him for that. But maybe, maybe Sunday is a day that we see – I keep waiting for it. Chris, they need something. Because I think you're right. That unlocks the offense if they can get him properly involved. No, and they need something. There's no doubt about it. They don't have that third element right now. Like, right? We've had this discussion before. I mean, you just you got to have more than two guys to be a good offense. I mean, we know the quarterback, okay, but I'm not talking about the other part of that. You know, it can't just be Hill and Kelsey every week. It just can't. You know, as we talked about, great offenses in the history of football have three guys, maybe four guys. You know, maybe four and a half to where you just go, holy crap, how are we supposed to stop that? And the Chiefs don't have that right now. It's a it's 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 Mahomes playing less than Mahomes caliber type of football, and then it's all about man, Kelsey and Tyree Kill, and nobody ever seems to be consistently able to show themselves within that offense, and it's it's frustrating right now. It is. Um, but I still think they're gonna win this football game.
including Clyde Edwards Alea, the running back they drafted with Jonathan Taylor yeah. still on the board. Not that Taylor would be having the kind of career in Kansas City because they don't run the ball the way that they do in Indianapolis. All right, next up, Saints, five losses in a row. Five and a half point favorites at the New York Jets. There are questions about Taysom Hill, although he fully participated in practice on Wednesday. Alvin Kamara fully participated in practice, which Big. is good news. He's missed four games right. now with that knee injury. Uh, I'm surprised it's only five and a half. You know what that means, and I know I know the Saints are not great right now, but these are the Jets. Over under is 43. Who do you like? Yeah, and the, you know, I actually I'm looking in the in our our sheets here, and I have the same score you do. I'm going Saints 24 to 13. Yeah, that's that's you know I just look at it and go, the the first off the Jets are a really beat up football team. They got a laundry list of guys who did not participate in the Wednesday football the Wednesday practice. I think a, a lot of them are going to be out. We know they were already kind of a team that was missing a lot of players to begin with, right? The Saints defense it's still somewhat of a force to be reckoned with here. It wasn't like the Cowboys moved the ball up and down the field on them. You know, interception pick six. Busted a run when they had the lead, and the Saints probably taking a chance to kind of stymie them a little bit that way, you know. And even Taysom Hill, I know the finger, yeah, it's a little concerning, but I think the element that he can bring just even to the run game with Kamara back, it'll be enough to where they just want an ugly slugfest, kind of play through their defense. Hopefully, Taysom Hill understands he can't take some of the chances he did the other night with that finger that caused them some interceptions. But Saints, twenty four thirteen. Yep, uh, exactly on the same page then. Same outcome, same score. We move on to the next Sunday game in the early window. Jacksonville Jaguars at the Tennessee Titans. We can probably handle this game in 30 seconds or less. Titans coming off of the bye. Jaguars falling apart. Titans are not going to fall into the same trap they did, losing to a horrible division rival at home. I don't care what the weather may be on Sunday in no. Nashville. I got the – let me just go at, at Titans yeah. 31-7. They're going to roll over the Jaguars. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you. I, I I don't see it being much different. You know, again, yeah. They they outplayed the, the, the shit out of the Texans in that bad weather game. They did some stupid things. I mean, even with that, it was like 4-0 to zero in the turnover margin. They had chances at the end of the game to still go down and drive and win it. So, yes, I, the Titans, I don't expect them to fall apart. They just, they've had a week or two weeks in a row of doing some dumb crap. You know, again, the misleading loss against the Chiefs, I mean, the Patriots. You know, hey, breaking a long run, fumbling, interception on the one yard line. You know, Tannehill missed a wide open touchdown pass. Then they missed the field goal behind that. Uh, so they've made some self inflicted wounds here. The Jaguars are only capable of running the ball. Their pass offense is stinky, dinky, sucky, ducky, okay? And the Titans can stop the run as good as anybody in the game. And they're getting they're healthy in the secondary for the most part. So when I look at that, I just go, no way. I'm going Titans 31-14. So much for a 30-second review of the game. By the way, the Titans are nine-point favorites, and the over-under is 43.5. All right, the last 1 o'clock game. How is I, this? This this feels like it should be 425. This feels like a pretty damn big game all of a sudden. A few weeks ago, no. Today, now. It does. Cowboys at Washington. Washington's won four in a row. There are two games behind the Cowboys in the NFC East with five games to play, and they play each other twice. This is round one. The Cowboys, four point road favorites with an over under of 47.5. Do you like the Cowboys? Or do you think someone's going to be throwing a rock at the whiteboard to symbolize David versus Goliath in the Washington locker room after the game? I want to pick Washington. They're playing better football. The last four or five weeks, every game with Washington, I go, man, that's the proper game plan on both sides of the ball. You know, they're doing a lot of good things. They really are. What I worry about with Washington a little here is that they're, they're another team that's they're a little banged up. I, I don't know what to expect from Landon Collins. He didn't practice yesterday. You know, Jonathan Allen's beat up and got an injury. Montez Sweat, I think we thought he was going to come back. Now he's on the COVID-19 list. You know, so that worries me a little bit. Curtis Samuel can't seem to stay healthy. He missed practice because of the groin injury yesterday. You know, they need that extra weapon to go with Terry McLaurin. You know, if they were at full strength, I think I'd pick Washington to win the game. I would. I have concerns about Dallas right now. Dallas's offense, I think what I've come to the re revelation of over the last few weeks watching them is, you know, 
They're, they can't dominate the run game like they could. They need to play Tony Pollard more, period. I don't know what's wrong with them. Like, stop being so stubborn. It's not even close. He's way better than Ezekiel Elliott, who's not even 100%. Even when they're 100%, he's better than Ezekiel Elliott. So stop doing this to your football team. Give Pollard the majority of the carries. You made a mistake with the Ezekiel Elliott contract. Your fault. F*** it. Move on. Okay. Now, you know, so that and with the other revelation I've came to, so now they can't dominate the line of scrimmage. And the passing offense, good, Mike, but I don't look at it as overly schematical, tough to figure out for defenses. It's a little too reliant on the Jimmys and the Joes. And that's why, hey, it was great early on in the year because they were running the ball and then everybody was healthy and Dak was playing good and it didn't matter. But now you don't run the ball and you miss a receiver here and there and teams have caught on to the pass game a little bit. They struggle that way. And that's why I, I really want to go Washington, but I just can't do it because of the state of their, their injury status. So what score did you pick? Oh, shit. 24-21. Cowboys. I – I uh, have the exact same score, but not that result. You're going the other way. I got 24, 21. I'm taking Washington. Good Look, for you. I'm done doubting yeah. Washington. I'm done. I'm done because, and this gets down to coaching. Ron Rivera, greater than sign Mike McCarthy, who was gone for ten days. I think that counts for something. He's just <laughs> returning today from being on the COVID reserve list. I don't care that your head coach can be involved in virtual meetings. Your head coach needs to have his behind in the building. And I know it's not his fault, but he's been gone for 10 days. Ron Rivera has been there those 10 days. Ron Rivera is building something in Washington. Ron Rivera is a very fiery personality when you get him behind the scenes. And he has this team rolling in the right direction. They have nothing to lose. And they're bringing that team into FedEx field. And hopefully some fans will actually show up. You know, now that the team's playing well, I know fans can be a little fickle, but you see shots of the stadium there, and it's not yeah. the best stadium in the NFL. No. It's probably the worst, frankly. It looks like it was built 100 years ago, even though it was only built about 20 years ago. But uh, I, I think Washington pulls it. It's just one of those where yeah. we've seen enough flaws from the Cowboys that rear their heads at the worst possible time that, that I think Washington will know how to exploit them how to bait them into doing things they maybe think are going to work and won't work. And, you know, the defense has gotten better as yeah. I think Ron Rivera has gotten yeah. involved with Jack Del Rio. And uh, I just, this is just one of those pasta and meatballs and I'm done denying the pasta and the meatballs. I yeah. did it last week right. with the Steelers. Right. I didn't have the guts to pick the Steelers. I got the guts today to pick Washington, which means Washington's probably going to lose by 20. All right, let's take a break. When we return late afternoon games, from the 14th Sunday of the 2021 season. It's PFTPM and Chris Sims Unbuttoned. We'll be back right after this. PFTPM, Chris Sims Unbuttoned, presented by Under Armour. Late afternoon contest from the 14th Sunday of the 2021 season. Detroit Lions on a roll. One game winning streak, which is a longer winning streak than they've had in a year. At Denver, the Broncos, eight and a half point favorites. I never know what to expect from the Broncos, although I did expect them to lose soundly to the Chiefs, and I was right about that, although most people were. 42 is the over-under. Do the Broncos cover? I think we both agree the Broncos win. Yeah. Do they cover that 8.5-point spread? Because that seems like a lot, Chris. It, it, it is. I, I have them covering, but only, I mean, through ugliness and because I just don't know, I don't know if Detroit's going to really be able to move the ball consistently during the day. You know, uh, that's what I worry about. The Denver Bronco defense is good. It really is in, in all areas. You know, they're they're not the the most the 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 the, the best run stopping team. They had a little issue with that in the middle of the year, but it's not bad. It's still good. And you know, I think between the fact that they'll be able to figure out the pass game of the Lions, Jared Goff outside in Denver, cold fall day, that doesn't match up. They'll be able to put another egg or two into the run game basket as far as stopping that and the Detroit uh, Lions run game that way. So I just look at that and go, yeah, okay, I, I, I don't expect, you know, a whole lot of success there. You know, on the other side, I could see Detroit giving the Broncos some issues. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater's the quarterback, and of course they are. You know, he's, he refuses to be aggressive or really go to try to win a game. And that's the disappointing thing about last week. It's just disappointing. He does, he's, he's just going to check it down to make sure he's not the reason they lose. And then, oh, wait, we're down by two touchdowns, and I'll try to turn on the gas here a little. 
That's annoying with Teddy Bridgewater. He lets teams hang around, and he'll do that with Detroit here. So I got him winning 23-13, to 13, but it'll be ugly. You know, I could see that 16-13 with five minutes left in the game, and they go down to finally score a touchdown to put it away. That's kind of how I look at it. I think, and, and this is a weather report game, and I'm going to give you a chance to change your score once I tell you what the weather's going to be. Is it going to be Denver hot? Is Sunday global because, warming striking? <laughs> De- no, Denver. Denver's kind of a nutty it is. environment it because is. you can have snow one day, and then it can be 70 the next day. No doubt. If they were playing on Friday, I'd take the Broncos to cover because it's going to be 35 degrees at game time and there's a chance of snow. But by Sunday, it's going to be in the upper 50s at game time. Warm enough for Jared Goff to grip the football with those undersized hands. And I say that half jokingly, but half seriously. That's a factor for me. I think the Lions will cover. The Lions have been playing teams tough. Yeah. I think they cover. 28 24. And I won't be stunned if they win just because of the Broncos. I never. Never know what I'm going to get. No, you don't. A lot of teams fall into that category this year, but the yeah. Broncos definitely do. Yeah, no, and I think a lot of it is because of what, what I said. You know, you heard me rant there, and, you know, I know everybody in the world loves Teddy Bridgewater, and it's not personal. It's just about the play on the field. He, he's he's going to let you hang around. He just is. He's, he's not going to ever kind of go for the juggler when it's there to be had or do that or make the play. You know, oh, there's a guy open by two feet down the field for a 40-yard gain. Uh, well, everybody in football would throw that, but he's going to look for something underneath, and it's, there's too many plays and yards left on the field with him weekly to where I, I think w- you know what you said could happen. I'm just going they ugly put one away later. Uh, so, yeah, it w- I certainly won't be betting on this game. I don't trust it at all. All right, let's move on to the next one. The Giants at the Chargers. The Chargers have several guys on the COVID-19 reserve list, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Chris Harris Jr., but it's the Giants who are down – to Jake Fromm as the quarterback, unless Mike Glennon is cleared from a concussion because Daniel Jones has a lingering neck issue. Ten-point favorites are the Chargers, who got the big win in Cincinnati to really thrust themselves deep into the playoff conversation. 43 is the over-under. Chris, who do you like? Well, I like the Chargers. You know, uh, I mean, what do we know right now? Uh, some of these guys might be back, right, for the Chargers because it's a close contact, right? Uh, am I-, Will- I think Williams and – right. Yeah, but 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 Williams went on yesterday. That's Wednesday. If he went on yesterday, he's not going to be back. It dates back to Monday. All right. All right. Yeah. He's unvaccinated, too, so I guess he could still end up being positive. But so we don't know. Does it really matter? They're playing the freaking Giants. Well, I know. I'm you picking and I them to win. Receiver. I get it. I'm picking them to win. I know that. But, you know, according to how much they win, that that's that's the question. It really is. And Daniel Jones was a limited participant in practice yesterday. So that's where I just go, I don't know what the hell to expect here. Saquon's ankle is hurt. Kadarius Tony's dealing with an injury. So I guess there's a lot of unknowns about the football game. You know, I okay, if we take it at somewhat full strength or just try to say, all right, the Chargers got enough pieces on offense and defense. Let's say Mike Williams comes back because the close contact was Monday and he can play. You know, they still got Guyton. You know, they got a few other guys that are good, you know, to make up for it. Hey, but yeah, I'll look at it this way. Yeah, we know the Giants' defense, not a great pass rush. Yes, and I would think Herbert and company could dice up the Giants in the in the pass game. I would think they could do that. And then on the other side of the ball, the Giants aren't good enough to take advantage of the less than run defense of the Chargers. And of course, yeah, if it is Fromm, it could be a disaster. So I mean, if Fromm is playing, I want to go. It's going to be thirty to twenty-seven, thirteen. Chargers. If it's Daniel Jones and company, I might change it a little bit. So that's where I'm really conflicted. I'm going to go as in, I'm going to go Chargers on this one, 24-13. That's where I'm going to pick this one. So I got them covering, but I think it'll be an ugly football game. I've got 30 to 17, but yeah, I mean, Jake Fromm does not inspire much confidence. Now, maybe he can prove us all wrong. And Jake, it's up to you. Prove us wrong. Go out and throw for 400 plus yards against the Chargers and four touchdowns and prove to everybody you can be a quarterback. Maybe you're the guy that the Giants need. I mean, I don't want to doubt the guy completely, but when you're down to your third guy, you're already screwed. And they're down to their third guy. By the way, every time I hear Jake Fromm, I think of Squeaky Fromm. Do you remember who Squeaky Fromm was? Do you know who Squeaky Fromm was? No, I don't. Not at all. I thought you were a historian. Squeaky he tried to shoot Gerald Ford. 
She, she, you're, you're only worried about the JFK assassination. You're not worried about other presidential assassination attempts. She tried to shoot Gerald Ford oh, in 1975, 76-ish, yeah. and she was a member of the Charles Manson. Ah, oh, got so, you. Well, he lived, right. so it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, I don't lie. think the gun went off. I think she raised the gun oh. and like it didn't fire right. or something. I don't right. know. I'd have to look it up, but she yep. did try to shoot Damn. a president, just not JFK, uh, which is a big. That's I think that's the only book you've ever read. It is. Didn't it, I send? Did I'm you about, ever read the Stephen King book I sent you? You mean the one that's ninety-seven thousand pages? No, I have not <laughs> read it. It's this that, thick. that doesn't narrow it down. That's <laughs> that's every Stephen King book. Well, I know. Wait, the 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 one JFK book, the only book you've ever read in your life, is just as thick as eleven twenty-two sixty-three, the Stephen King book with the fictional alternate history. No, of the, no, the, it's like three hundred plus assassin. pages somewhere, right. I guess. And you know what, Mike? Right. I'm so crazy. That's the only book I read, and I'm honestly thinking about reading it again. I really am. That's that's how freaking weird I am about that subject. But really, only a historian about that. And football. Other than that, not a historian. <laughs> you need to read. You need to read Playmakers when it comes out because there's actually a chapter about you in it. I will read. I will read it. I will. I definitely just that chapter though. That's that's where I'll draw the line. <laughs> 49ers at the Bengals. The Bengals are one point underdogs at home against the 49ers. Rematch of Super Bowl twenty uh, three and sixteen. This one again. We got two teams where you. I don't know. I don't know. I, and I have my pick. I'm not going to change it. Yeah. I'm going to let you go first. You yeah. tell me what you think is going to happen. Well, yeah, it, this is a, it's a coin flip football game. It is, you know. And I think I'm going to boil it down to like really one thing that kind of worries me a little bit. You know, first off, you know, I, I I guess in my heart of hearts, you know, if Debo Samuel was there and company, I do think the 49ers are probably the better football team. I do. He's not there, you know, and I don't think he's going to be. That that makes me question it a little bit to a degree, all right? And then, you know, I think the other thing that I get bothered with from the Cincinnati standpoint is just their ability to protect the passer. That's what I get scared of a little bit. And the 49ers can rush the passer, and they can get there with their front four. You know, so I've gone – this is a game I've gone back and forth with um, – but I looked at, like, again, the injury report. Man, the Bengals got a lot of injuries on their roster right now. They're a banged-up football team to go uh, as well. Uh, I like the Bengals. I like a lot of the things they do. I don't know. There's just a part of me that can't – I can't pick them to win this football game. I can't. They got a good run defense. I understand that. This is a different animal in Shanahan and what he brings to the table. I'm just going to go the 49ers eke out an ugly – you know, I'm, I don't want to say ugly, but they, they, they just figure out a way to win. I'm going to go 27-24, but don't feel real good about it. Ooh. I got 23-20 Bengals. We're concerned about Joe Burrow's pinky. He didn't practice on Wednesday, but he's insisted he's going to play. Zach Taylor, the coach of the team, says he's going to play. I think this is a redemption game for Joe Mixon, who had that ball that just kind of fell out of his hands yeah. onto the turf when it was 24-22, and the Bengals would have had what would have been one of the great comebacks in franchise history if they had managed to win that game. I, I think the Bengals snap out of this funk more quickly than they snapped out of the last one, which saw them lose two in a row. They know what the stakes are. They have an opportunity to catch the Ravens and they'll know by kickoff whether or not they are a win away from tying the Ravens at the top of the AFC North because the Ravens play the Browns earlier in the day. So I like the Bengals in this one. And with Debo Samuel, I'm going to go ahead and guess he's either not going to play or he's not going to be the same guy, maybe even come back and aggravate it. I could see this being the kind of injury where they push him back a little early and and who knows what happens once he plays. He did not practice on Wednesday and the yeah. reports have been and the comments straight from Kyle Shanahan, the right. head coach have been it may be another week before he comes back. All right. This That's a game. tough one. I can't wait for that game, though. I think that Bengals 49ers game is really interesting and intriguing. And, yeah, I, I can't make it my best bet just because I, I do think it's a – I could see, certainly see, you know, your score in 23-20, too. So I'm, 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 I'm excited for that one. One of the reasons we won't see Cowboys Washington in the 425 p.m. Eastern slot on Sunday is we've got Bills at Buccaneers, a game that back in September looked like a potential Super Bowl preview. In fact, that's my preseason Super Bowl pick. The Buccaneers have continued to play well. The Bills have fallen off. They are 3-4 and four since starting 4-1. and one. And I think they're psychologically and emotionally reeling from what happened to them on Monday night against the Patriots. They got a short week, pick it up. Fly to Tampa, play a Bucks team that is very good at home. The Bucks are only three and a half point favorites in this one. Only 
surprises me. Over under the week doesn't surprise me. It's the highest, 53 and a half. Uh, who you got, Chris? I'm going Bucks. I, I, I mean, I feel like the Bucks are just kind of like in coast mode. They know how good they are. They are really good. You know, their secondary is getting healthier and better as we go along here. They were really close to blowing out the Falcons last week. I mean, really close. Brady's playing awesome. You know, the Bills, again, I think are just compromised in too many ways against the Buccaneers' offense. You know, that, again, this is another one where I go, they got to worry about getting overpowered in the run game. They have to worry about that. So, that, you know, and again, the Bucs, if they, they're, they're going to do whatever they got to do to win. Like last week, they went, wait, there's no way that Atlanta can rush us, rush the passer and get to Brady and they can't cover us. Let's just throw the ball, the ball every play. They did that. But if they feel like they got to run the ball to win, they will. And they have a big, powerful offensive line. I think they create a lot of mismatches across the board for a good Buffalo defense that I respect. You know, I just don't know. Can McDermott come up with a game plan with Leslie Frazier that's creative enough to blitz and get pressure on Brady and company? You know, maybe I would say yes if I felt a little bit better about their corners. But I don't feel great about their corners being able to match up against the Bucks wide receivers. So I look at that. And then the other side of the ball, hey, I, you know, Josh Allen, I'm sure he'll make a few plays in this game. There's no doubt about that. The Bucks are not, you know – totally hitting on all cylinders and pass defense right now. But we know the Bills can't run the ball. And now that the Bucks are going to be able to go, okay, we can play the pass all the time, the pass rush going. I just don't see how the Bills win the game. I, I really don't. I'm going Bucks 31-21. I got 31-20. Yeah. And uh, everything you say, copy-paste snarky comment. And the Bills, I believe <clears> – <throat> I just think they're reeling from what happened. And there's extra pressure on Brian Dayball. The comment that Sean McDermott made when he was asked a very simple question, Brian Dayball putting this team in a position to be successful, the offense in a position to be successful. When you don't say yes, the answer is no. And uh, I just I feel like this is a bad matchup all the way around for the Buffalo Bills and the Bucks cruising at home. Tom Brady... Checking the box on another young upstart who thinks he can be like Tommy. And and he knows the Bills. He he said on his podcast this week, when I look at the roster, I know this guy, I know this guy, I know this guy. And they don't have Tredavious White. Yeah. It all lines up in favor of Tom right. Brady. Let's take a break. When we return, the primetime games. Justin Fields versus Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford versus Kyler Murray. We'll talk about those next on this joint edition of PFTPM and Chris Sims Unbuttoned. PFTPM Chris Sims Unbutton presented by Under Armour. And before we get to the primetime games, if you watch us every week, first of all, thank you very much. Second of all, if you watch us every week, I, well, I, you know, I, then you're I, I a cool ass dude your and you're smart for you're watching cool us. Ass, yeah. I, I, I just, I, I feel like you may need a break from time to time from listening to Chris. And here's where you get to listen to Chris <laughs> tell you about his good friends at Under Armour who may or may not be sending me a hoodie and some shoes. I, they need to. I, I, I hope they do. And yeah, we're proud to be sponsored by Under Armour. Yeah, I read this read three times a week. I, I mean, I should have it memorized, but I'm dumb and blonde and from New Jersey, so I can't remember it. All right. We are supported by Under Armour, and just like us, Under Armour wants to give you an edge. They are fo focused on performing better and taking their game to the next level. Everything from running shoes that propel you forward, get Florio some damn running shoes so he can run on the treadmill and feel good, to hoop shoes that give you insane grip. He doesn't need hoop shoes. He has no game, so don't worry about that. They even make hoodies that reflect energy. I think he wants one of those hoodies to reflect the bad in energy the Vikings give him on most weeks. All right? And we're not just about the end result, winning, or glory. Under Armour is about the hard work, the dedication, the cycle of training, competing, and recovering. We give you advantages but not shortcuts. The only way is through. All right, uh, well done. Thank Let's you. get to the primetime games. Sunday night football, the Bears at the Packers. I know the folks in Chicago are dreading this game because they don't see a way around Green Bay, and the odds makers agree. 12-point favorites are the Packers, 43 over under. It's the biggest spread of the week. Chris, I'm. you're not going to pick against your guy, oh, Aaron Rodgers. Do you pick him to cover against the team he owns oh yeah yes i am i'm picking him to cover i am you know, they, they know how to play this bears defense you know again the bears defense it's respectable we know they can rush the passer packers are one of the best pass protecting teams in all of football you know they have balance to run the football 
Rodgers, to me, has the greatest gauge of understanding what's going on in the game out of any quarterback in football. What I mean by that is when he feels like his team's in control and they're the better team, he'll play conservative and just kill you slowly. When he feels like, oh, crap, this one's a little in doubt, let me step on the pedal and I'll start throwing lasers around the field. He's as good as it gets from that, that standpoint. You know, uh, you know there's, there's a few injury questions with the Bears football team. As much as I love the way Justin Fields look, man, he's been out for a few weeks. It's not going to be that easy, you know, coming back out in a game like this in Green Bay and think you're going to be real sharp and on top of everything. Packers defense is good. When the hell is Jair Alexander going to come back? That's the one thing I want to know. But uh, I got Packers 31-16 in this one. Yeah, look, I, I, I hope that the Bears give him a good game. I, I, I hope that they they unleash Justin Fields and maybe some new and creative ways to give the Packers fits. I've got 31-17, though, Green Bay. Green Bay can can sense that one seed, and they need that one seed. They are striving for something that will help propel them to the Super Bowl. I know it didn't get them there last year, but if they get any team other than the Buccaneers at Lambeau Field, it's a lock of a victory. If it's the Bucs, then they're going to have to work for it a little bit harder than they did last year. So I, I think they're going to work hard to get that one seed. I think they are going to get the one seed when it's all said and done. And one of the ways to get there is to beat the Bears 31-17 on Sunday night. All right, Monday night football. Hey, wait, Arizona real quick. Do you still, I wish they still had two teams they got to buy. I know we got to hurry up, but I really do. I, I, I like the two. And I, I guess when it goes to eight teams in the playoffs, that's what will happen again. But I wish we still had two. No, when it go, no, well, no, when it goes to eight teams in the playoffs, nobody will have a buy. You, know, you don't think anybody's going to get a buy? If and when it goes there. No, you got eight teams. You got eight. You got yeah. Who's going to get a buy at that point? You're going to have one versus eight, two versus seven, yada yada. And nobody gets a buy if they oh, go to eight. That's if and stupid. when they go to eight. That's stupid. Okay. So, I think they're going to eventually go to 20 when the NFL grows to 40. I hope to be alive for that. We'll explain that another day, how you go from 20 down to the final two. But I think that's where it's eventually going to be. But that's going to be years from now. All right. Uh, did I give a score? I did. Yeah, I got 31-17. You got 31-16. Monday Night Football, Cardinals two-and-a-half-point home favorites against the Rams. Remember, the Rams had owned the Cardinals. They had destroyed the Cardinals every time they played. And then the Cardinals beat them at SoFi Stadium earlier this year. Do the Cardinals complete the sweep of the team that recently had them mastered on an annual basis? I think so. I'm going with them. I, I just I, I'm not like hey the the Rams played better last week. I know that. I like that they ran the football more. That was a positive thing, no doubt about it. Stafford was underneath center a little bit more and made their team a little bit more dynamic. You can't just play oh drop back pass game all the time. You know, so there's that aspect. And, hey, you know, I, but I'm just still not – I'm not sold on, oh, things are fixed with the Rams just because they they beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 37-17. to 17. I mean, I, I don't know. I got to look real quick. But, I mean, late in the second quarter, the game was still 10-7. to 7. You know, it wasn't like it was like, oh, man, this is just pure dominance and they're just going to run away with this thing. So, you know, I'm not sold on the Rams being totally fixed. I'm still a little underwhelmed, you know, by their defense. It bothers me a little bit. It does. There's lack of plays. I, you heard me complain about the front four today. Are they ever going to show up and dominate a football game this year? So, uh, and the Cardinals are one of those teams that just seems to, every week, got a good game plan. Players make plays. They just have a positive vibe and mojo of, like, this is their year. I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl, but is, this is their year to be kings of the NFC West and, and the one or two seed in the NFC. So I'm going Cardinals 24-21. Rams fight hard, make it close, but going, going Cardinals here. I got Cardinals 30-21. to 21, And, look, I, I think the Cardinals want people to pick the Rams. The Cardinals want to continue to be overlooked. And it's going to be very interesting when the playoffs roll around. With all that youth and inexperience, are they going to be able to win in the postseason against teams that have players who have been there and done that? That's going to be the real challenge. Let's go ahead and take a break. Best bets and our weekly Folsom Prison Blues pick when PFT PM and Chris Sims unbuttoned continue right after this. All right, we disagree on two games straight up and two against the spread as we wrap up PFT PM and Chris Sims unbuttoned with our best bets, the three plays that we like the most against the spread or an over-under. Chris, you're up first. Well, I'm just going with the, 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 the things I know, right? I know the Titans are good. I'm not the, – their body of work says they won't make these mistakes that they've made the last two weeks. They had a bye week. I got too much faith in Mike Vrabel and company. The Jaguars, it's Dunsky. They know their year's over. 
Titans still playing for a number one seed in the AFC. I got them winning 31-14. I could see it being a bigger blower than that. I'm going Tennessee as my first one. I got Titans as well as my first one. I got them 31-7, but uh, they're just better and they're rested, and it feels like the Jaguars are falling apart even more than they were. Next up. Yep, next up, uh, I'm going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I am. I mean, again, I just don't think it's a good matchup for the Bills. I think that's really what I look at more than any. Damn, you're going to pick that one too. Shit. Slot okay. machine. Yeah. Sorry. But I just I look got at it. it like if the Bucks win, I don't see it being like a field goal type of football game. I don't. I mean, a three and a half point spread. And, and ultimately, I just think the Bucks is a complete football team. The Bucks, I think, have been kind of coasting. This team will kind of get their attention because of the narrative around Buffalo, and it is Josh Allen, 31-21, taking the Bucks. Yep, I, I got the Bucks too. I think this one could get very ugly for the Bills. I mean, this, you know, we, we rarely pick, like, ridiculous lopsided scores because it, if you're wrong about that, then you, you never hear the end of it. But I could see this one get out of hand for the Buffalo Bills. I could see it happening. All right, your third best bet. Are you going where I'm going? I'm going to – I went Tampa on the second one, just so we're clear. So we're, we're the same on the first two. Let's see what you do with the third one. Go. Uh, you want I'm, me to go with the third one? You want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Let me hear I'll it. go first. Yeah. Saints minus five and a half oh, at the Jets. Okay, good. We're not total time slot for the machine. Saints, All right. Time for the Saints to win. Time for the Saints to win. And what better team to win against than an overmatched Jets team that, that has even more injuries than the Saints do? Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, listen, yeah, I, I guess I'm just I'm a little scared to pick the Saints. But I got them winning by 11, too. It was one of the ones I starred to think about it. I'm going to go with the Packers, though. Again, I know what the Packers are. You know, on the road, season's over for the Bears. Field's first game back in a while. I just think slowly but surely Green Bay will just wear their ass down and beat them. I did think about the under in the Lions-Broncos game and the Seahawks-Texans game. Um, but, but ultimately, like I said, I think I'm going with the proven commodities here in this one. I, I'm surprised that you would even touch – Anything as it relates to Sunday night, given your record so far this year on Sunday night. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is oh Aaron Rodgers, and he's going to get me to look right. <laughs> well, and it, I, I thought about that one. I just think 12 is too much because I could see garbage time, Justin Fields, touchdown pass or a touchdown run that takes it from a cover by the Packers to a cover by the Bears. That one made me nervous. 12 is too much for that game for me. All right, our, our Folsom Prison Blues pick, the one game that we would take if we were laying dying, not dead in the gutter, because if you're dead, you can't make any picks. I, I got Titans. I'm sure you got Titans. Yeah, too, of course. Right? Uh, yeah. Titans. How, how do you get who, the, the, the Texans are playing the Seahawks. I don't totally trust the Seahawks. So, yeah, I'm taking the Titans over the Jaguars. All right, Mike Vrabel, come through for us. Don't make us look like even come on, Mike idiots Vrabel. than we are. Thanks for always, says some for bad. You're being whatever. We're done. We're out of time. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbutton Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.